Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Um, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of my Tico 3D printer. For anyone who doesn't know, Tico was actually a Kickstarter campaign about midway through 2015. Um, they had 3D printers going as low as $99, which was the super early bird special. Um, there was a hundred of them, I was back at number 58, and I did actually get one of the $99 super early bird Tico 3D printers. Now I have unboxed it once before, and I've had it running, and I've been testing it um, all of yesterday basically. Um, but because I like packaging and I like unboxing things, I'm going to show you how they actually package the Tico 3D printer. So this is the Tico box. Um, it's very plain, very nondescript. Um, on one side it just has the name of who it belongs to and some warning labels. On the other side it has the different power plugs. I'm not sure what they're going to be doing with these. I'm assuming that when they ship them they'll probably circle the one that it has. Um, because one thing that I'll get into in a second um, is that the power plugs are actually all wrong at the moment. On the other side, another plain side, and on top is a big Tico label, um, but unfortunately because my address and my invoice were stuck on there, it's ripped most of that off. So I'm going to just remove that bit of sticky tape. So these ones are a really nice, fairly simple box. Um, as Tico said, because they're based in California, um, shipping out of America can be really expensive. So when I went to pick this up at the post office, I was actually expecting a bigger parcel, but they've done a really good job in kind of minimalizing the packaging and just making everything really small to try and fit inside. Um, so good work, Tico. So to get into the box, they just have one big stripe of sticky tape alongside, so you just cut all the way around. The top lifts up, then you can open the box like this. So on top in here, oh, I might be able to flip it forward for you. So that's how it comes pre-packaged just like that. So on top here we have some warning labels. We have an FCC regulatory statement. We just have the invoice. Um, I'm assuming that that's probably for shipping so that when it gets to customs they can double check the value of the printer. I've heard that some people are having trouble getting their printers through customs in the country that they live in uh, because they paid $99 but the value of the printer itself is $179 because that was the retail value on Kickstarter. So if you had an early bird of $99 Customs were asking lots of questions and some people have actually been halted in customs to try and prove that the value is wrong, basically. Uh, then on top here we have safety and compliance, which I've never actually seen in a 3D printer before um, in terms of packaging and unboxing. But that's pretty good. Um, next up we also have a Tico quick start guide. Um, so there's a lot of printers out there that don't get a quick start guide and that really annoys me, especially if you're new to 3D printing because it can be quite confusing if you've never used one before. Um, so it's a fold out quick start guide. So it looks like that. It's pretty cool. I like the colour scheme, just like a nice blue, black and white. So on the first page it's got a setting up, so obviously you take it out of the packaging and then plug it in. And then they have a bit about how Tico's lights work. So if it's glowing gently, it means that the printer's ready. A solid light means that it's connected to the Wi-Fi. Rapid flashing means that there's a problem and it's the, the Tico's self-diagnostic algorithm has detected a problem. Uh, and then if it's going through a three-step loop, which is sort of like dim, dimmer, dimmest, dim, dimmer, dimmest, and it just kind of repeats like that, um, it means that it's downloading an update, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to unbox it and then we'll go through more of the quick start guide. Um, so on top of the styrofoam here, there's a power pack. Um, so there's two things about this power pack. First is that the power plug is wrong. Um, so I live in Australia um, and we have, I think, type B power sockets, whereas this is an American power socket. I remember Tico saying the first hundred of these were shipping with American plugs um, because there was something to do with miscommunication between either um, manufacturing or distributing, which is a bit disappointing, but Tico have said that if you contact them after probably a month or two, they will actually send you the right um, power pack if you need it. So in terms of specs on the power adapter, um, it is tiny, let me just say. 
Um, so yeah, input is AC 100 volt to 240, which is really cool because it means that even though it is an American plug, it does work on Australian voltage. Um, and then it outputs 12 volts at 2.5 amps, which is tiny for a 3D printer. I still can't believe that it runs so well on such little voltage and amperage. It's crazy. So now we get to the fun part of actually taking the Tico out of the box. So I'm going to flip it over so you guys can see it coming out. So there's really quite nice block of styrofoam here. So we're just going to pull that out. And the Tico is indeed sticking in this one. So I'm just going to flip it up a bit. So that's the residual packaging. So this is the Tico itself. So let me just pick this up out of the styrofoam. So this is the Tico. It's really quite a nice, elegant type 3D printer. I love the way it looks. Um, unfortunately, during shipping, there were some bits that shook loose. Um, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, thank you, Australia Post, for throwing it around. So when I did my first unboxing, I actually took heaps of photos of the unboxing itself and looking at the machine while it was first running. Um, so I'm going to put in the description the link to my Flickr account where you can look at all the different photos that I took. So unfortunately, when it got here, one of the vertical carriages um, for one of the sets of arms had shaken completely loose and was completely out of the track. So I had to try and snap that back in gently while one of the others had half shaken loose. Um, so that was a bit disappointing. Also on the back, if I flip this one round, that there is a little power port. So that's what you plug the power pack into. There's quite a bit of epoxy glue sort of leaching over the join and on, onto the, um, the aluminium and the clear plate and everything. Seeing as it is one of the first 100 3D printers, I'm not too stressed. Um, I'm sure that once they get feedback from the first 100, QC will be heavily improved. So in the top here, there's a really nice injection molded lid. And then in the top here sits your roll of filament. So the first 100 Tico 3D printers are shipping with this blue, it's called Gem. Yep, it's Gem, it's a PLA and it prints at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, so I've heard that people are having trouble with it because it's a fairly low quality PLA. Um, but some of the tests that I was running before I was running my own PLA just because I wanted something a bit more familiar. I may do more tests with this PLA later on, um, but for the moment most of mine are just using some old PLA that I had from my other 3D printers. So I'm going to leave this out and I'm going to show you some more of the 3D printer. So if you were tagging along with the Kickstarter, you'll know, but for anyone who's new, um, this whole chunk on top, all the white bit is actually one solid piece of aluminium. So if I lift her up, you'll see that we're left with the print bed. So the print bed is pretty interesting in itself because it's, it's made of a material that I've never used with 3D printing before. It feels like rubber. It actually, it feels like a cat's tongue. As weird as that sounds, they seem to have a really good time making stuff stick to it. So it is flexible so that when you do big parts, they'll generally pop off. Uh, on the bottom, it's got nice rubber feet. I'm not sure how long these are going to last. I'm really, really hoping that they're going to last a while. Um, I'm also hoping that the rubber coating on top will last a while. And if it doesn't, then I'm really hoping that it can peel off and they might sell it as a consumable. Or maybe someone like BuildTac might come along um, and design and manufacture a replacement surface on here that works like BuildTac. The other thing is that Tico is really, really light. So it weighs 2.4 kilo, which for a 3D printer is quite light. When you consider that something like the Cubicon or the Zortrax can weigh up to about 25 kilo, it's quite incredible. So I'm going to lay it down for you, just so you can have a look at the underside. So within here, they have the magical hot end, the end effector, and then three sets of arms that run up to the vertical carriages. So the vertical carriages are moved not by belts, but actually moved by a rack and pinion system which I've only ever seen in the Polar 3D, um, which in my opinion wasn't accurate enough to get good prints off of. But the Tico has proved itself a little bit so far. So that's a bit of a look on the inside. Just gonna flip it back up. Bring the bed back over. 
we're going to plug her in. So like I said before, everything shipped with an American plug, so I had to nip out and just get an El Cheapo um, Australian to American plug, so that's those two there. So we plug that one in, undo the wire, plug this one in, and if I spin this one round, we just plug it straight in, and you'll see that one light comes on. You might be able to hear it zeroing itself, so that's the three axes zeroing themselves. That three stage light up like that means that it's updating the firmware. Now that it's gently pulsing like that, that means that it's ready to go, but it hasn't actually connected to anything. So I've got my laptop out because this printer is Wi-Fi based. So I'm just going to flip it back around so you guys can see what's happening. And I'm going to refer back to the quick start guide. So on here it says talk to your Tico. So the Tico always wants to connect. So it actually builds its own Wi-Fi connection around itself. And then you can hook into that. So it says connect to the Tico Wi-Fi. Tico's LED should be a solid light once it's connected. So if we go to the laptop and come down to the bottom, Tico Wi-Fi 84F7. So I click on that, want to connect. And if you keep an eye, Tico's lights just went solid, which means that we're now connected and we're ready to go. So once you're connected to Tico, you want to open up an internet browser. I'm going to use Chrome. And then you have to type in this website or the IP address. So something that they have fixed since I have been testing this print is that within this, within this website, the, um, the IP address I went to, it actually has a message saying that cloud printing is still under, under development. So because the cloud printing isn't quite ready yet, um, you'll have to use your machine offline, which basically means just using your laptop to connect straight to the Wi-Fi hotspot that the Tico creates. So if I click Use Offline, this is what the print menu looks like at the moment. So it's quite simple, um, which can be good and can be bad. Some of the prints that I was printing, I felt could be a bit slower. The print page on here doesn't have an option for changing the speed. Um, so I'm assuming that they've picked a speed which is optimized for the machine itself. But I think that it could probably go a bit slower um, and just make things a bit better. So one of the first things you'll need to do with the Tico if you want to use it through a software is load the filament. So the first thing you want to do is come up into the top left where it says manual controls, click the load filament button and it'll be checking for filament which I really, really like because that means that it has um, filament detection which is something that 3D printers should all have but for some reason a lot of them don't. So you just grab the end of your filament, feed it into the Bowden tube that's up above Feed it in, and then once it's grabbed, you can put your roll in there, put the lid on, and it'll feed the filament in for you. The hot, end, the hot ends on the Tico machines are mind-blowing to me. Um, they're made of titanium, um, and the heater block itself is about that big. It is, it is absolutely tiny. The other thing that goes along with that is that there is no active cooling anywhere. This machine can print in temperatures up to 250 degrees, which is a bit mind-blowing when there is no active cooling whatsoever, especially if you're printing PLA. One thing that I find awesome as well is just the speed at which the hot end heats up and cools down. It heats up in like 20 seconds and can cool down in like 10 seconds. I've had this thing printing, 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 and as soon as it finishes the print, I'll flip it over and I can actually touch the nozzle without burning myself. It's warm, but it's not hot. So within the software, add model. So this is a model that I've just taken from Thingiverse. Uh, it's a little vase. So I'm just gonna show you how I would have done it. So within the software, you can rotate quite happily around the model. Unfortunately, you can't pan yet, which I find to be a bit frustrating um, because if you do have to zoom in, rotating, Rotating is fine, but now I can't see the bottom of the model. So I'm hoping that I'll put in a pan option. So, so this is quite a large model. I'm going to scale it down a bit. So you click the middle square and just pull down and it'll rescale itself. And then you can also rotate using the three little lines that are around the side. So once you've done that, you come up to print settings and you can select a couple of different print settings, but not very much. So the first one is temperature. So the printing that I was doing, I was running at 210 degrees, um, 
um, I was using a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, um, and I was actually using an infill density of 15%. I'm going to turn support structures off because this print doesn't need them. Then once you're happy, you hit the big print button underneath. It'll slice. So the slicing is actually remarkably quick. I was quite surprised with how quick it slices. Um, so good work, Tico. So once it's done slicing, it gives you a time and a length of filament that it's going to use, which I find really quite handy. Uh, and then it has manual, manually calibrate and auto calibrate. Manually calibrate is what I've been using up till this point. Auto calibrate is still in beta form and I'm not sure if that means that they're still working bugs out of it or if these first hundred production models don't actually have it. So from here, you click the start button. So I'm going to manually calibrate just to make my life a bit easier. So now that it's finished the calibration, it'll go ahead and actually print this phase. So one of the issues that I've had with the test prints that I've done is that for some reason the slicer that Tico used doesn't actually put a top layer on, which I find quite odd. I think the biggest question that people are going to ask is should they buy it? And in terms of value for money, this thing blows everything else out of the water. I, I was an early bird and got it for $99, whereas just the normal pledge level was $179. I've heard rumours that the price of the Tico won't go above $200. Bear in mind that I may be wrong. But even at the $179 mark, you're still getting a lot of 3D printer for your money. The build volume is 125mm diameter by 125mm high, which is about the same as maybe an up mini. And the up mini is $800, whereas this is $180. So you get it roughly the same build size. You can actually do a higher resolution on this than the up mini. You can change temperature on this machine and it looks so good. So for $179, if you want a 3D printer just for the hell of it, I would say buy a Tico. If you're serious about 3D printing and you want to be able to do flexible filaments, don't buy a Tico. If you're looking for a large format 3D printer, obviously a Tico is not going to do for you. If you're just looking for a new tech gadget to play with, $179, you can have a 3D printer. And it's a Delta 3D printer, which means that it looks awesome while it's printing. So thank you for watching my unboxing and first impressions of the new Tico 3D printer. I suck at outros. See ya.